hello everyone this is Rashida welcome to my channel my today's video is going to be on regression using decision tree in my last video we talked about classification with decision trees so definitely we needed to do a regression with decision tree as well it's not too much different it's pretty much the same but still I wanted to show it to you guys so if you are having uh, trouble you can have a reference for today's video, I choose this housing data.csv file. Please feel free to download the data set from the link in the description box below to practice. And I first imported the pandas library and created this data frame uh, using pd.readcsv. And see, I have set option display.max columns 30 so that it shows 30 columns. If you don't do that, sometimes it actually does not show all the columns. So what we're going to do is we have all these parameters, bedrooms, bathroom, square, fit, living, and everything, all this other stuff, zip code, lat long. Uh, so we are going to use all of this to predict the price. So this is the data set. We have 21,000 data, 21,613 rows of data here. First, we are going to check for the null values. If you have null values in the data set, machine learning model gives you error. df.isna.sum, this gives the number of null values in each variable in the data frame. And you can see all zeros. There are no null values. The next step is I want to define the training variable and the label, the target variable. As I already mentioned that the price is going to be the variable that we're going to predict so price is our target variable and the rest of the variables we are going to use to predict the price so all these other variables are going to be our training features look at this this id this id is not necessary for price prediction you understand why and the date also we are not going to use because when there when there is date there are other kind of things that's called time series analysis we are going to work on it in the future but for today i'm going to exclude the date here x the training feature so we are going to drop the price because price is our target variable and id and date we don't need them so we are going to drop them from the df and we will get the rest of the variable our training features and if we get the price from the data frame that's our target variable then the train test split we will not use all the data for the training only we should keep some data separate for the evaluation purpose uh, we have train test split method in scikit-learn library itself so first we import train test split method and then x train x test y train y test train test split takes x y the training features and the labels that we just defined and then test size 0.5 that means 50 percent of the data will be used for the test and then the random state of one you can use any other integers of your choice data preparation is done now the model development so for that first we will import decision tree regressor from the scikit -learn tree. then in the variable rg we are going to call decision tree regressor and simply we will fit x train and y train in this regressor and see we are not passing any parameter in this we are accepting all the defaults the training part is done we will use the this predict variable so rg.predict and x test the data set we already kept separated for testing that's how we are going to get our y predict the prediction is done and how are we going to evaluate I will use mean absolute error. There are other evaluation metric. We will talk about them in detail in future. But for today, I will use only mean absolute error. So we pass X test, the true label, and the Y predict, the label we just predicted. Now you see the error. Quite big of a number, right? Now let's see how it does on the training data. Let's get the prediction for x train as well we will exactly use the same method and then mean absolute error y train the true label and y predict train the label you just predicted 
and you see only 557 and let's check here look why pretty train they are these numbers right if you see the original Y train you can see they're almost exactly the same it's a serious overfitting problem if you don't know what overfitting is please refer to my video on polynomial regression i explained the overfitting in details there i have the link in the description box below please feel free to check so when the data set fit in the model really too well our model almost memorized the training data so the model is working only well on our training data when we are trying to predict with some other data it's not doing well so we don't want that we want our model to find a pattern in the training data and not memorize it so that it can perform well on some other data as well let's try some other parameters here i didn't pass any parameter i just accepted all the defaults now we should try some other parameters because we have an overfitting issue here so for that, I am going to use grid search CV. I explained detail on grid search CV in my last video as well. So here we are going to work on grid search CV again. I'm going to use these three parameters here, max depth, max leaf nodes, and max features. These are pretty important parameters. And look, for max depth, I want to try 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 12, all these values. For max leaf nodes, I want to try all this. And for max features, I want to try all of this. 10, 12, 14, 16, and 18. When I will use grid search CV, it will find the best parameters for this data set and this model. RG1, I am calling decision tree regressor again. And then using this grid search CV, it takes the decision tree regressor, this RG1, and you pass the parameters. Then the same process. You will fit X train and Y train, our training data to the RG1. And then if you want to see the best parameters RG1 found, that is max depth of 9. So it tried all of this and it found 9 is the best. Max features of 16 and max leaf nodes of 50, 50. So the training part is done here. And then Y predict again on the X test and then mean absolute error i pass y test and y predict and then you see we you get this pretty big number but then you see when we do the same with training data the numbers is pretty big too right so pretty much it didn't memorize the training data the overfitting problem is not as severe as before anymore, but the performance of the model can be improved more. By now, I worked on few other machine learning models, so please feel free to try them on this data set and feel free to try more parameters, different parameters here and see what happens. Okay, so that's all I wanted to share today. And if you like this video, please like, comment, share and subscribe. Thank you so much for watching.